Hey, don't try what you are about to see at home. We're what you call experts. That's right. We do this for a living. On Mythbusters. Am I missing an eyebrow? Danger at the gas pump. Are cell phones triggering deadly explosions? Can high altitudes cause big problems for silicon implants? If I were in there with the breast implants, I'd probably be dead about now. And computer drives. Have they reached dangerous warp speeds? <laughs> oh my god! It's a horror show! Who are the Mythbusters? <laughs> Adam Savage. That's right, you've got some kind of bogus minister thing. It's not a bogus ministry. I performed a dozen weddings already. And Jamie Heineman. Farewell, cruel world. Between them, more than 30 years special effects experience. Still kind of sexy. They don't just tell them it. They put them to the test. Hey, wake up, farm boy. What? Can you help me with uh, directions to Antioch? I'm lost. So what are we doing at the Stoke Gas and Oil Memorabilia Town in Santa Rosa, California? Well, we're here to see whether you can accidentally blow up a gas station with a cell phone. And even if we fail, do we still get to blow something up? Oh yeah. Excellent. So what exactly is this myth? Well, it's an email myth that says that the use of a cell phone near a gas station could cause an accidental explosion. Uh, and in fact, people have bought into this and on some gas stations near the gas pumps, you can see a sign saying, please don't use your cell phone here. But also, it's a very good story. And a very good story is very powerful and promotes belief. Heather Joseph Witham, resident folklorist, has another dramatic cell phone explosion story. Well, the story goes that there's an executive speeding along on the freeway in Los Angeles. And all of a sudden, he hears the ding, 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 and looks down and he sees that his car is just about out of gas. So cursing and frustrated, he gets off the freeway. He drives up to a gas station, gets out, starts pumping the gas, takes out his cell phone, and calls the office. At which point, there's a tremendous fireball that engulfs the executive, and then the entire gas station explodes. There have been more than 150 gas station fires across the United States since the early 90s. Could cell phones be the culprit? The Stoke Gas and Oil Memorabilia Town is an ideal location for road testing the cell phone myth. What are you doing? It's kind of a low rider. <laughs> Fred Stoke used to collect tractor parts until oil cans proved to be more rewarding. Wow! Oh, that's amazing. This is the largest one quart oil can collection in the world. There's over 10,000 different cans here. I'm going to do my house like this. <laughs> Well, we're going to need a big blast chamber, something large enough to contain a large explosion and protect us, uh, and also to uh, control environmental conditions like humidity and temperature and that kind of thing. Uh, we're going to need gas and, and a way to get it in there in a vapor form, and we're going to put a cell phone in there and call it and see what happens. The chamber will be constructed from Lexam, a polycarbonate product favored by race car drivers and jet pilots. I find this very appealing. Polycarbonate is a plastic that is extremely tough. You can about fold it in half and it won't break. Uh, it'll stop a bullet, it'll stop all sorts of shrapnel, and uh, I just love this stuff. I love it. Anticipating a big bang, the guys are constructing the chamber with a failure point, the center of the two halves of the box. So that if the blast is too big, instead of the Lexan failing or the aluminum welds failing, the box itself will just poof, separate into two halves. Like a clamp. Yeah. The blast we might deal with might be a lot larger than we think. And so, you know, building in a failure, a failure point for this that it can fail safe uh, seems like a good idea. Plus, it'll look really cool. Oh, yeah. It'll definitely look really cool. Considering Americans pump gas around 12 billion times a year, there are plenty of opportunities for disaster. 
Electrical sparks and gasoline vapors are a potent mix. And it seems there is much more to this story. You know, I think it's highly unlikely that a cell phone is going to do this. You know, it's just, it seems like a dumb idea to me. Well, actually, it turns out that there's another part to this myth. It seems that women are largely responsible for the gas station explosions, specifically because they get in and out of their cars while filling up. And so they'll build up a static charge on their body. And then when they touch either the gas tank lip or the filler nozzle, that that will ignite the gas and cause an explosion. That seems more likely. I think so. Over 50% of the accidents occur when a person re-enters her car while refueling. Bob Rinkus of the Petroleum Equipment Institute has studied the hard data. Ten years of statistics place women in the most danger. We've had 152 cases now that we've confirmed. 78% uh, are women, 22% are men. The problem comes from getting back into the car while refueling. Electrostatic charges are generated on the seat and clothing due to movement. Getting out takes the charge with you. So if your first touch is near the open fuel tank, the resulting discharge spark could be deadly. So, silver car, not getting in, he's done. A Mythbusters stakeout showed very clearly that women were more likely to get back into the car while the gas was pumping. When you broke it down to percentages, women were actually six times more likely to get back in their cars than men were. To investigate this second theory, static electricity, they'll also need to build a device that generates body-to-clothing friction and hopefully create a big spark. So the Mythbusters are shopping for something shocking. So do you ever have customers come in and say, could you sell me something different? This one causes too much static shock when I wear it. <laughs> no, but they say this causes too much shock. <laughs> right. Yeah, we have to define our terms here, right, I guess. Right. Yeah. Should we get two? Two of each? Why do we need two? Well, one for each of us to wear. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, if we're going to get two of them, we might as well get... Yeah, why don't we uh, get one of those from one of the okay. regular ones? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. The experiment is now focused on creating and storing a strong spark. No one will be allowed inside the blast chamber, so the spark has to be discharged remotely. So this is called a Leiden jar, and it's actually just uh, Tupperware with foil on the inside and foil on the outside. An early capacitor, which is basically an energy storage device. Around 1750, in the Dutch city of Leiden, scientists discovered that two conductors separated by an insulator could store an electrical charge. Benjamin Franklin used it to shock his party guests, who stood in a circle while the current surged through them. Not a stunt for people with weak hearts. So the electrons are leaping off the PVC and being stored in the Leiden jar. Ooh, all right, good. Wow, I got like three shocks from there. With the shocking garments in hand, they're off to the auto yard to find a suitable car seat. You think we could build some panty friction in the bed here? Well, that's what it's for, isn't it? Well, we won't be the first. Ow! Ugh. These panties had no idea what they were in for. <laughs> this is like where panties go when they've been very, very bad. <laughs> I mean, I don't know which one I actually go with anymore. At this point, it's just like a, a sea of rubbing and vinyl and wet car seats. It's like high school. That's actually good. I got more of a charge off of this than anything yet. They have the seat of choice, but will it provide the necessary charge? I don't see any sparks. Watch this. Ooh. Back at Fred Stokes Gas Museum, the fire department has arrived to supervise the experiment. So, is it cell phones or static sparks that cause gas station fires? Well, let me see. We've got a crash test dummy with his legs removed. We've got a uh, panty static generator with leopard fur and uh, panties wrapped around it. It's not exactly hard science. 
<laughs> Nonetheless, the firemen want a much smaller bank. Too much gasoline vapor inside the chamber, and it becomes a very large bomb. What's the potential? What could go wrong? Um, break all the windows around here. You know, that might be the worst case. I don't want to see that happen. Jamie wants big boom. <laughs> <laughs> Down boy. Down boy. He's being a little conservative, which is his job, and I appreciate that. We will still try to get the biggest explosion we can. Time for the fire protection suit. Delivering the gasoline to the chamber is Jamie's responsibility. He will use an aerosol device to spray high concentrations of flammable fuel vapor directly inside the blast chamber. So I, uh, I rigged up the cell phone in there. Okay. Uh, when I call it, it says detonate. <laughs> Very cute. Okay, we're gonna start the fuel. You guys ready? For gas to explode, you need the right mix of fuel and air. As the concentration edges towards the flammable level, their gas meter emits a warning. Okay. Go behind the thing. The chamber is primed and ready for the cell phone blast test. Calling now. Hello, explosion. Hello? Hello? He never answers his phone. Both Jamie and Adam are confident the cell phone won't cause an explosion. It creates heat, but not enough to cause ignition. Time to test the second theory. Okay, guys, we're done with the cell phone and we're going to the panty static generator. Keep as many unnecessary people back. Okay. I really have some concerns about that thing. I really do. Okay. All right. I will tell everybody. Thank you. You know, you'll notice the firemen are all kind of standing a lot further back than we are. Yeah. Uh, so this is not to be toyed around with. Okay. It is a bomb. Okay. Okay. With the chamber saturated in gasoline, it's time now for Adam's panty static generator to spark an explosion. All right, we're going in five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> We should have had a spark right about then. Come on, come on, baby. Okay, I've gone through what should have been like at least three sparks so far. Okay. Even with sparks and the heavy fuel load, the gas will only blow if conditions are absolutely optimal. So far, nothing is happening. Oh, how hard can it be to blow up a room full of gasoline? My guess is just the wrong mixture. Just that simple. The wrong mixture. That's it. We're packing up and we're going to go home. With our tail between our legs. Coming up, getting closer to the Big Bang. We made something blow up. <laughs> so it's back to the drawing board to see if cell phones or static sparks can cause gas pump fires. Ignition is still proving to be difficult, but the personal flashpoint is rising. Uh, wait, wait, hold on, Adam, before you break up all the money out. All afternoon's work. <laughs> Give me just a I thought all, take, I, I thought all four sides were taped. You're a nice guy and all, but sometimes you're a bull in a china shop. I'm not going to respond to that. <laughs> Let's just see whether this works. To get a bigger spark, Jamie connects a device called a Jacob's Ladder. You'll be familiar with its climbing arc from those old science fiction movies. But this is no toy. It's high voltage and potentially lethal. Now be careful on this metal. You know, we've got some pretty heavy duty currents here, so. Okay. All right, shall we uh, lose the spark and get some gasoline going and blow some stuff up in miniature? <laughs> Is gasoline flammable? You'll find out after this. Four, three, two. Hey, we made something blow up. We made something blow up. <laughs> Adam has improved his Leiden jar. 
The heavy-duty version will provide a potent spark. Yep. And finally, they are getting an ideal blend of fuel and air. Well, I lost a lot of hair on my arm. How about that? 